About 20 years ago, I was living in a charming suburb of a major American city when I penned this tale. In the past, I shopped almost exclusively for groceries at a single store. I went there no more than twice a week at most. I remember a day when I was at the grocery store, and I was near the deli. I looked up and saw a guy in a butcher's outfit staring at me from where he was working. He seemed intent on something in the distance, and it caught me off guard a little. A bigger guy with a black mustache. He seemed to be in his late fifties or early sixties. He just kept staring straight at me. In addition to my anxiety over it, I grinned and threw him a little gesture, but he made no effort to return my smile or wave. I stepped away from it as best I could and went to a different section of the shop. In all my trips to that store, this man never once looked away from me. It made me feel uneasy. He had a fresh face, so I figured he was a new employee or something. Then one day when I was shopping there, I found myself in the snack section. As a result of the store's layout, customers in one lane could look into the next even if the shelves were empty. The clearing I found when searching for a certain cereal. I realized that a guy was staring at me from the lane gap between two rows. As soon as I saw him, I backed away and fled. My patience had run out. Right now, there was something really unsettling about this guy. Once I reached the store's entrance, I was able to find the manager. I inquired about the mustachioed worker in the deli with him. He told me the lone worker there was a mustachioed guy. I filled him in on the guy I met. The higher-ups also assured me that nobody enjoyed working in that capacity there. We then made a thorough search of the business, but were unable to track down the missing customer. The last time I shopped there was the last time. I used to work at a convenience store when I was younger. Back then, I was a senior in high school. I was working full-time and going to school, so I had a lot on my plate back then. Most of the time I was responsible for restocking the vegetable section, but I was happy to help out wherever I was needed. I wouldn't mind so much if I weren't always hiding out in the back to check my phone. There wasn't much for me to do at the store or during slack periods. On that particular day, sales were rather low. Later, I went into the shop's back room to check my messages and started talking on the phone. So that I could be reached in case of emergency, I always had my phone on me. Even fewer would go to the back. Roughly ten minutes after my return, I heard the cloakroom doors open. Having some lead time, I assumed it was either my manager or a colleague. I closed the door quietly behind me as I hurried into the bathroom. I heard them walk in. Then I overheard other voices. Both people came within what must have been twenty feet of me before we started talking. However, Neither my co-workers nor my boss's voices were ones I was familiar with. They were talking and walking around, and I overheard it. Yet, I struggled to make head or tail of what they were saying. One of them afterwards mentioned an automobile in the back, which I overheard. They were plain to see as they swiftly sucked our cash and ran. Keeping quiet was difficult since we did not have the finest security as a little antique business. I figured they would go. Even so, they continued their conversation. At last, it seemed like they were getting ready to go. Then, out of nowhere, I heard a walkie-talkie buzzing as someone tried to get in touch with me. Quickly, I turned it off so it wouldn't make any more noise. We can only lament that the damage is already done. One of the males, who I overheard, seemed concerned about the sound. In their haste to go to the toilet, one of them banged twice loudly on the door. I was ordered to provide my name by the guy, who yelled at me. For my part, I didn't say anything. Then, in an angry tone, he told me to go. The first thing that came to me is what I ended up saying. I told the man that I had called the police, and that they were on their way. I was caught off guard, but it seemed to have the desired effect. After then, demand was quiet. The two of them were last heard leaving. I hung about the house for a while before turning on my two-way radio again. My employer has been trying to get in touch with me for quite some time. When I got back, I went in the store. After someone called the police, they arrived shortly afterwards.
This happened to me in the grocery store. I used to do a lot of my shopping when I got out of work. And it was great that there was a grocery store so close by that was open all the time. The fact that it was quite empty at the time made it easy for me to swiftly get what I wanted. On my way home from work one night, I wandered into the soda section of the supermarket. When I came to the very end of the shelf, I saw something on the very bottom. It resembled a Polaroid photograph. The fact that one was sitting on a shop shelf made me curious, so I bought it. The bottom half, where most people like to scrawl, was replaced with a home illustration. I planned to save new information in the basement as soon as I gleaned it. In many respects, the home was a mirror image of my own. I stared at the photo for quite some time. And after doing so, I realized that the home looked very like mine. However, a few days later, as I was about to go for work, I saw something on the floor. After deciding to return the picture since I found it odd, I made my purchase and headed for home. There was yet another Polaroid picture shot. When I picked it up, I thought I recognized the picture from the supermarket. The pattern was identical to the one in my house. Now that I thought about it, I was worried that I had forgotten it in the supermarket the night before. Having taken the photo with me to the office, I went about my day. Once my shift ended, I needed to stop at the grocery store again on the way home. After picking up some frozen dinners and fresh produce, I made my way to the pasta section. Again, it being close to midnight, the store was quite quiet. There was something I noticed as soon as I switched lanes. Someone around 30 feet distant was looking directly into my camera. There was a barrier between us, so I couldn't see his face. To some extent, the camera obstructed my view of his blue jacket. As soon as he saw me, he bolted behind the other man, and I know without a doubt that he was the one who had taken the photo of my home. Just what it was he was hoping to see from me. As I approached the stranger in the aisle, he walked away. I looked all throughout the shop for the guy without any luck. On the other hand, I didn't. As soon as I finished my errands, I made my way back home. After that, I lost interest in collecting photographs and therefore stopped bumping into the guy. This man has always left me with more questions than answers.